so we're getting pretty close to actually being able to make some decent graphical applications with JavaFX, but one topic that we definitely need to go over before we kind of just list out a variety of nodes and learn to use them is sizing. So right now, and for this episode, we'll be using just a button, and then that button will be inside just a normal group, and that group will be the root parent for the scene. So if we run it, it's just going to look like this. And with what we've learned, we don't really know how to actually make this scene like manually bigger, other than dragging it out like that, but we don't want to do that. So the first way I'll show you guys is to directly set the width and height of the stage. So we can actually take our stage object and say set width, and we can give it, I don't know, 400. And then we can do the same thing for the height, and we can say set height 400. And then we can see here, we have a 400 width and height stage, but this is not the way I would recommend to do it. So another way that we can do it, and I'll explain why that's not the way I would recommend to do it. Another way we can do it is by giving the scene a default width and height value. So even though if we go over here and we say scene dot set width and and scene dot set height, we can see it's not recommended. There's no width set width and height method for a scene object, but you can pass in default values to its constructor for what width and height you want it to be. And so if we run this here, we can see that this is 600 by 600 now. So what's happening here is it might be a little confusing because even though the scene is what we're seeing, we've said before that the stage is the outermost layer. So you might think by default that the stage is what's going to determine, like the width and height of the stage only is going to determine how large the uh, the area is. And although that is true in a way, just like everything else in JavaFX, sizing works in a hierarchy. Um, and you'll find that about any GUI library. Really, everything is in a hierarchy of sorts. So I've drawn up this little paint diagram here. So big S is for stage, little s, scene, group, and button. So it's representative of this little program we have here. So how sizing is going to work is this stage is first going to say, okay, do I have a default height or am I relying on other stuff that I am storing? And even if it does have a default height, it's still going to go on with a hierarchy. It's just going to start at a certain value. But since here right now, we don't, we didn't give it a certain height to be or a certain height or width to be. It's going to go and it's what it's going to do is it's going to ask whatever is right below it, which we've learned is the scene. The scene is always right below the stage, so it's going to say, "Hey, scene, what do you have inside you, or do you have a default value that I need to size myself to?" And the scene's going to say, in this case, yeah, well, I want you to start at 600 by 600, but I'm still going to check inside of me to see if you need to be even bigger than that for anything else. So what's going to happen is it's going to say, hey, group, because we can, like we've said before, the group is the root parent for the scene, which we can see because the group is right there. So it's going to say, hey, group, do you have anything really large inside of you that we need to account for? Well, the group is going to go to all of its nodes, which in this case, the group only has one button in it, and it's going to say, hey, button, what size do you need to be? Well, we didn't give it a default value, or, or the, the button, we're just using whatever the JavaFX original size for a button is, so that's pretty small, so that's nothing compared to 600 by 600. So then what's going to happen is the button's going to say, hey, group, this is the size of my button. The group's going to say, hey, scene, this is the size of the uh, the button that's inside of me and then the scene's gonna say alright we don't have to worry about that because I have a default value that's much bigger than that and then finally so so we have this kinda upside down hierarchy I guess going until finally the stage says alright so 600 by 600 that's what I need to be and that's why we're seeing that and we can see how if we take out these lines so we're no longer giving the scene a default value we can see that it goes back to being very small, but it's not arbitrarily small. It's small enough to fit the button. And the only, we can see that the height ends pretty much right, or the, I don't know, vertical distance, it ends right after the button. 
we can see that the horizontal goes a bit more. I think that's because a stage has a default width value, like a minimum width value. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just know that the stage, if you don't give it a default value by saying, let's say stage dot set width, or like giving the scene a certain width and height, it's gonna size to be whatever its nodes are. And I recommend you use it. I recommend you do it that way, essentially, because you want to give the lower level stuff in the hierarchy values so that they'll pass it on up. Um, that's better for a lot of reasons you'll find um, when you do a lot of practice with this. And I'll show you what I mean, just so you guys know this works. So, And one thing I'll go over really quick, when you're sizing a specific... Um, when you're sizing a specific node, let's say a button in this case, there's a couple of nodes that won't have this, but nine times out of ten, you're gonna see set max width, set min width, and set pref width. And by the way, I'm talking about width a lot in this video. The same goes for height stuff, so don't worry about that. But you're gonna see, yeah, set min, max, and pref. I don't want to confuse you guys too much. We're gonna be using pref width most of the time because when I say that the stage asks the scene, which asks the group, which asks the button, what size they are. The first thing that they give them is the preferred width. So like the button will give the group its preferred width. And it'll also give it its min width and in certain cases it'll give it the max width. It kind of depends on the context. So if the preferred width of the button can't be done, let's say because the stage isn't big enough for some reason or something's blocking it, I know this probably sounds confusing. I wouldn't worry about it much. Just know that most of the time you're fine just using set pref width. It's pretty rare that you'll have trouble with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, let's set the pref width as 200 and we'll set the pref height of the button as 200. So if we run this now, we can see that our stage is 200 by 200. Why is that? Because the stage asked the scene, which asked the group, which asked the button. The button said it's 200 by 200, went back up the hierarchy. The stage figured out it needed to be 200 by 200. One more thing I want to go over, because I know even though we haven't done too much, we've went over a decent amount of stuff conceptually. I want to go over one more thing. So there's a thing called, or uh, rather a method I suppose, called set layout x. And you can use, or set layout x, and there's also another one called um, set layout y. And what these will do is, they'll set the x and y value, or the, the starting x and y value of whatever you're setting. So here, since we're setting the starting x and y value of the button, we can see this point right here where the button starts, this is actually 100 by 100. Or, uh, 100 in the x direction and then 100 in the y direction. Now, it might look confusing because you might be saying, why doesn't it just say set x and set y? Well, the thing is, again, like everything in Java FX, this works in a hierarchy. So, your layout x and layout y, it's inside of whatever layout you're in. And I know that might not make a lot of sense, but we have to keep in mind, this button is wrapped inside a group with its own coordinates. So I'll show you guys, if we actually do something like g dot set layout x, and we put it at 100, and then we do g dot set layout y, and we put it at 100. So here we can see here, I just took the group that the buttons or the, the button is inside of, and I gave it a layout x, and well, you might be thinking, what's gonna happen now? Isn't it just gonna stay at the same place because we're telling the group to be at 100, 100, and we're telling the button to be at 100, 100, so nothing will change, right? Well, that's actually not right. Now, the button is starting at 200, 200, because how this works is, the button's coordinates, this is being described in a local context. And what I mean by that is, when I when you hear the word local with GUIs, local or local in general in, in computer graphics means we're not considering the entire world graphics. So this whole stage is the world graphics. Like in, in, in a world context, this is 200 by 200. But relative to the group, this is only 100 by 100, this point where the button starts, because we actually, here, I'll draw it in paint, we, what we have is, we have this frame, right? And then, 
here's the point. Let's say this is 100, 100. This is where the button's starting. Or, I'm sorry, this is where our group is starting. Right? So let's draw this. So our group is here. And then within our button, our button is starting at 100, 100 relative to the group. So we go 100, 100 more. So this is actually going to be 200, 200. So this is going to be 200. Oh, God, excuse my horrible writing. But this is going to be like 200x and 200y even though we only said for it to be 100 by 100 because again it's relative to the layout that it's within and that layout in this case is the group so rewatch that if you have to i know it probably sounded confusing but i promise it's really not that bad and now we can sort of use this concept to really put stuff where we want it and have some cool looking stuff so probably next episode we'll just discuss a variety of nodes and then after that we might actually have an episode where we just sort of put together a cool basic GUI. So that's all for today guys. Hope you learned something and hope it wasn't too confusing and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.